Hi, Josephine. You'll you'll be able to um, see us as soon as we get started. We'll get started in just a, a minute or so. Okay, Maria, looks like we have a nice group of people here, and it looks like most people are in. So if you want to get started, we're ready. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. We are going to get started then. All right. Uh, my name is Maria. I am usually instructing at the Selden Library in... Um, right there in um, middle country but since we're not able to be there in person we just brought your lesson to you um today we're going to be making two things we're going to be making some face masks and we're also going to be making um some reusable on paper towels so um you know let's get started um you're going to need your machine some thread your bobbin threaded um, scissors, rotary cutters, um, pins, and um, I guess we'll start with the face mask first. And uh, before we start, I'm going to go ahead and just go through a little bit of a crash course on um, how to use your machine, just in case you're a little rusty um, or you just need to troubleshoot something, okay? So I have my handy dandy brother here, and um, we're going to go ahead and thread our main thread. So this is gonna be the main thread, which is when you're sewing, it's the top of the thread. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just put it on the little stick. You'll see that it either pops up or down. I'm gonna pop it all the way up. Put our thread in there. And then you notice your machine probably has some diagrams on the top. Um, the diagrams are very simple. It just shows you how to start threading your machine, um, whether you're going to do it to start sewing your project or if you're going to wind a bobbin, which is the dotted line. Okay, so um, I already have my bobbin threaded, but if we were to um, thread a bobbin, you're basically going to go and start with the diagram um, that has the dashed line. So I hope you guys can see this. Um, we're going to go through over here, through the little eyelet right here. Okay. And then we're going to go around the little knob. Okay. And make sure that has like a nice tension. And you're going to crisscross it around. So if you can take a look, you just crisscross it around over here like that. And then you're going to follow with your bobbin. Um, hold on. Let me just. Sorry, ill-prepared here. Um, we're gonna take an empty bobbin. Okay, just an empty clear one. Um, you're gonna place it on the little bobbin threader right here. Okay. And you're gonna pull it over. Once you hear that click sound to the right, that means that your machine now knows that you're gonna be threading a bobbin. So you take the, the string that you have, 
And then you're just gonna wrap it once, twice, three times, maybe even a fourth one if you have the slack. Okay, and then you're just gonna use your presser foot to go ahead and wind that bobbin. Okay, and it just starts, it should start going, excuse me. Let's see, make sure everything is right. Okay. And it starts going, and it's not cooperating with me, which sometimes happens. Sometimes you have to hold it really tight where you have your little loose end of the thread. And then, okay, and then you can go ahead and snip your bobbin out. Click it to the left again. See, you went from right to left. And your bobbin is threaded and it's ready. Okay, and then you're gonna go ahead and de-thread at the top. And you're gonna thread your machine to start your project. So to do that, you're gonna follow the solid line diagram right there. Okay, and it goes through numbers. A lot of uh, machines have numbers where they tell you one, two, three, and then you just follow the number sequence or you follow the arrows that it shows you on your machine. Okay, so this one, we're gonna go right through the top, down, and then under the knob. And there is a little silver, um, I guess like a little silver hand, you should, I would call it right here. And you're gonna go over that. So it's gonna hook your thread right through, okay? And then we're gonna go down. Now make sure your needle's in the furthest up position. And then you're gonna find like a little eyelet right there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's right here. And you go through that. And then you go ahead and thread your needle from front to back, okay? So, excuse my shaky hand front to back, and there you have your top needle um, threaded. So now the biggest question is always the bobbin. The bobbin's a little bit trickier. My machine has it right here on the bottom and it's a side bobbin. Side bobbins are more intimidating than the top loading ones. The top loading ones are very, very simple. Um, but this one's actually pretty simple too. You just have to get the hang of it. You have to have to practice. So you're gonna take it out with this little um, I guess a little lever you could call it right here. Let me see if I can get you guys a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this little lever right here. Okay, you're gonna take it out and you're looking at your bobbin like this. This is the top of your bobbin and it goes straight into right here. Um, see, there's like a little groove so that top of your bobbin will ideally go into that groove all right so we're gonna take our thread okay and I hope this is a good background I'm not sure if you can see that well but um you're gonna make sure it's kind of like a like a backwards p where you're thread hangs on the left side of the bobbin. Okay. Um, can you guys see that? Well, I'm not sure if you can. Amber? Yeah, we can see it. Kind of? Yeah. Okay, so it's hanging on the left side. And then you're gonna take your bobbin. Now remember, this is the front end of your bobbin. And this is the back end. You're gonna go ahead and turn it over, pop it in, okay? Now you see this little, like it has like a little groove in there and it has kind of like a little, um, I guess, what would you call it? Like a little um, covering on it with a, with a little screw. And then there's this little teeny tiny little groove right there. So what you wanna do is take your thread and thread it through there, okay? And you're just gonna follow that along. It seems like you can't get through that, but you really can. Your thread is gonna fit through there. 
and it's gonna slide right through and you're gonna see that it's now in the big groove right there. Okay, so I hope you guys saw that. I can do it again really quick. So I'm taking out my bobbin. Once again, on the left side, you pop it in like that. And then you follow the little groove right there. And then you tuck it under that little metal piece and then it's gonna be in the big groove now. See? Okay, now very carefully, this is the tricky part, I think, very carefully. You're gonna take your bobbin and place it the right side up again with the little pin right there. You're gonna take that little metal piece that flaps out and you're gonna secure it kind of like that with the two hands and you're gonna push it back into the hole, making sure that it lines up with the um, groove, okay? So it's right there. Okay, perfect. Now you're gonna say, okay, so now how do I get started? So you're gonna hold the top thread tight, okay? And manually, you're gonna turn your needle down a couple of times and you're gonna see from the bottom that it's gonna start bringing your thread up. So once you see it pop up right here, I hope you guys can see that, you can take scissors or a pin needle, whatever you want your finger and just, whoop, it comes right down. So now you have them both on the top. With a top loading bobbin, you really don't have to do that. It kind of does that by itself because of the way it's made. But with a side bobbin, you just have to make sure that your thread comes up. Alrighty. Um, I hope you guys could see that. And then you can just go ahead and close that. You can put your little lid back on and you're ready to sew. All right. So we're going to start with our face mask. Um, not sure if you guys got all the directions, but you're going to need a fat quarter or basically just an 18 by 22 um, piece of fabric. Okay. And that fabric is going to be cut into, um, depending on the size, if you're making a mask for adults, you're going to do um, two pieces of um, six by 10 rectangles. Okay. So um, your short size is going to be the six, long ways the 10. Okay. Um, once you have that, you're going to cut um, elastic. I use a quarter inch elastic. All right. And I cut it seven inches. You're going to need two pieces of those. Um, and of course, your sewing machine thread um, and some pins. Um, okay. Do, are we waiting for people to cut their fabric? Amber, or do we just get started? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you could go through it. And we mentioned this in the chat, but if you're missing a step, this will be posted on our YouTube. So you could always go back and watch it. And I also okay, just great. posted the directions in the chat. So um, you can just go ahead and move along. If people are doing it with you, wonderful. But they can also rewatch it if they miss a step. Perfect. So we're going to move right along then. All right. So I have my two pieces of fabric. Um, again, they're both six by 10. So what we're going to do is um, my fabric has patterns. So um, when I work with patterns, I like to obviously have the pattern um, show outside. And I probably didn't show you this before, but um, this is going to be your end product. Okay. So this is the one with elastic, all right? And this is um, the one without elastic. Now I'm only gonna show you how to do the one with elastic, um, unless of course you want me to do the both, um, but they're both pretty much the same thing. Um, the only variance is that one has the elastic and one has um, the ties, okay? And the ties you would kind of just measure out how long um, you'd want them for your head. Okay, um, but this is the finished product either way. Okay, so as you can see, I have one that has um, the pattern on both sides, which, you know, is pretty and it's nice, um, but there's also the one that has just the pattern on one side and then just um, 
you know, the reverse on the other. Um, I find that helpful. So, you know, each time that you put your mask on, which is the right way to put it on. So you'd know that this is um, going against your face and this is going um, to be showing on the outside, okay? So um, we'll get back to my pieces. So these both have patterns, right? Um, and I do usually do right sides together so that when you turn your project over, both of the sides are showing. Um, that is up to you. You can do that or you can do right side to wrong side. And that way you'll have a front and a back um, for you to know which is the front of your mask and which is the back of your mask. Okay, so we're gonna put this all together nice and neatly. I'm gonna align it all. And then you're gonna take your elastic and you're going to go ahead and pin it corner to corner on each of the short sides. So hopefully you can see that well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take your um, straight pin right over there. And this is gonna go between the two um, fabrics. So you're gonna go one there and you're gonna go with your pin. I'm gonna put a shorter pin. There's a shorter pin. Now the size of the pin doesn't matter. It's whatever your preference is. Um, and I find it sometimes when you have smaller projects, smaller pins work better. Okay. So we're gonna do that. And you're gonna align it as best as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, as you know, most of the projects I do, um, they're being turned over. So anything that you sew around is going to be hidden away. <laughs> so nothing's ever going to show, um, which is nice. Okay, so we're going to take again our corners. And be careful not to stick yourself with the needle because that always happens to me at some point and it hurts. So be careful. Now, if you wanted to make these for kids as well, there are included some dimensions for kids um, masks too. Um, they're gonna be a little bit smaller. And um, of course you can play with the dimensions too. Um, not everybody's face is the same. So if you find that um, the standard adult or the standard child size is too big or too small, just cut your fabric a little bit bigger. It's not, it's not a huge deal. Um, okay, now you're gonna see that right now my fabric is not matching up. And that's okay because, you know, when we cut things by hand, um, you know, there's always some room for error. So it doesn't really, it's not detrimental. Just line it up as best as you can. Um, we can always cut out the excess later, okay? So now you see we're all pinned up in the corners to here, to here. Um, and again, it's corner to corner. So you're gonna have some elastic hanging out in the middle. When you're sewing, make sure that you kinda, you know, don't push that middle elastic towards the mid towards the edge because you're gonna probably catch it and then it's not gonna work out. Um, but what we're gonna do next, we're just gonna go and sew all the way around and we're gonna leave about a two inch gap at the top or the bottom or the side or wherever you want. Um, Maria? Yes? Somebody, Josephine is commenting that you did not do three layers. Okay, so the three layers um, is actually optional. If you go to the CDC website, um, the basic most simple uh, way that they instruct you to do it is with two layers um, of fabric. So that means the one piece and the two piece. If you want three layers, you can certainly do that. Um, you know, that's absolutely your choice. Um, but according to the CDC website, um, two pieces of fabric is enough. Great, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, so um, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and go um, around and we're gonna leave two inches um, at the top or the bottom, wherever you want. Um, so we can go ahead and turn our project inside out um, later, okay? So now, excuse me, my machine might be a little loud. So if you can't hear me, 
or if you need me to redo something, let me know. But we're gonna get started. Um, I like to start somewhere in the middle. So I know that I'm gonna give myself enough um, room to go around. Maria, before yeah. you start, um, Amelia's asking if you can show more closely how the elastic looks between the fabrics. Sure. Now let me know if this is close enough, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and finish. You're gonna take your elastic, so this is, and you're gonna sandwich it in between the corners. How does that look, Amelia? Did do you need to see that again? And it's gonna go right there. Perfect, she said. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. No problem. Alrighty, so I li like to get started in the middle. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Now, I always like to also um, sew with my pins up because I can see that I'm not catching them. If you catch them with your foot or your needle, there's a chance that your needle might break. There's a chance that the pin might break and might fly into your eye. So <laughs> be very careful. Um, even though sewing is an ancient art form, um, it's still pretty hazardous. So <laughs> be careful. Um, try not to go too fast, go at an easy pace, um, and always try to see where your pins are. That way you can avoid anything kind of just flying at you. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go start in the middle. Okay, and we're going to do a quarter seam allowance. So basically in your um, machine, you're going to see your plate. Now some plates come with the measurement marked on there and some don't. But you're going to see there's lines going from top to bottom. Those are basically quarter inch lines. So, um, you're gonna line up your fabric to the first line and that's gonna ensure that it's gonna be a quarter inch. Okay, so it's like a little built-in ruler that you have there. Okay, all right, and we are going to start. And my press it right here. Can you guys see that well? Okay. And we're going to start. Now I can start manually too. Okay, that'll get me started. Okay, now the very last piece I like to do with um, like the corner pieces, I like to do it manually so I don't go too far out. Okay, and I also like to go. Um, and backstitch to secure my elastic even more. So with your knob on your sheen right there, you're gonna go backwards and you're gonna backstitch, okay? Okay, so you see that my thread just popped, okay? And that's okay, you know, it happens. Machines aren't perfect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my project Take it out and I'm gonna go ahead and re-thread so I can continue. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, go under. And if your thread keeps popping, um, I would say probably take a look at your um, tension. Maybe there's a little bit too much tension. Um, I like to keep it either at a four or a three. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it to three just in case that's that's my issue here. And you're gonna go ahead and once again, front to back. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and start where we left off. So right here. Perfect. Now, if you want to backstitch um, with your foot pedal, you should have a lever somewhere on your machine, mine's right here in the front, that you hold down, okay? 
and you go with your pedal foot. Okay. like I need to troubleshoot something, okay? Why? Because if you can see here, and um, I think some of you might have that problem too, you have like multiple threads there. So there shouldn't be multiple threads. There should be just two nice threads. I have, what, like one, two, three, so that just doesn't look right. And if you would keep sewing, you'll get stuck. So. We're gonna see what's going on and take out. And again, if this happens, um, you know, machines aren't perfect. I'm gonna cut all our little threads, okay. Um, and sometimes this happens because um, when you start sewing, you'll notice that you have like little tail ends Sometimes they get caught and they get tangled, um, especially when you backstitch. So hence why I prefer to backstitch um, manually. I think there's a little bit more control over that. Um, but yeah, it tends to get tangled and um, you get multiple threads. It happens. So I'm just gonna cut all of my tail ends, make sure everything's cleaned up. There's no threads. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And um, our threads went away. So what do we do now? We are gonna, this one's already still pre-threaded. You just have to kind of go front to back again. But you see, we lost our bobbin, right? There's no um, thread on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and Troubleshoot is the name of the game. So um, you see, I still have my little tail here. Um, all I have to do is kind of elongate it. I would say about like maybe four inches, just to make sure. And you're gonna pop it back in and we're gonna thread that puppy again. Right, and looks like I brought my thread back. I think, maybe, maybe not. Let's see, there it is. Mm, what did I do with my scissors? Sorry, guys, technical difficulties. Okay, and now we bring it back over. Awesome. We got our friends. We put back our little guy here. So for those of you thinking that you don't know how to sew well, or it's always you and you're the problem, no, just machines are finicky. And sometimes they just do whatever they wanna do. And sometimes they work perfectly for, you know, hours and then they just, you know, decide not to. So we're gonna go. Maria, we yes. have a question from Maria. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is a good setting for stitch size for this cotton fabric? Okay, so stitch size, that's a great question. <clears throat> okay, so we have our stitch sizes right here. So this one controls the width of it, and this one controls the length of it, if that makes sense. So um, since we are using a straight stitch, we're gonna have it in zero. So I guess the width, the width of the stitch would technically be like if you wanted to go into zigzag. So if I wanted to go zigzag and it'll be like a huge peak, you want to go into five. But right now we're using a straight. So we're gonna use straight stitch, which is the zero. Okay, and then we're gonna do the length of the stitch. Now the length of the stitch determines how close together each stitch is to each other um, and how long it is. So 
the bigger, how do I explain this? So the higher the number, the wider your stitch is gonna be. And the shorter, the more kind of just like shrunk together it's gonna be. Um, right now I have mine on three, um, which is what I usually use for regular cotton fabric. Um, either three or four. Um, I find that if you go too close to each other, it tends to kind of just bunch up your fabric. So I like to leave it at like a three or a four, um, but my preference is definitely three, okay? Does that answer your question? Thanks, Maria. I think that was a good explanation um, and Maria said perfect. So thank you for that. Okay, you're very welcome. All right, so now we're at, at a point where we are reached one of the corners, finally. And we're gonna turn our fabric without having to cut the thread and start all over. So what you're gonna do is with your needle all the way down, okay, you're gonna lift your lever up to lift the presser foot, and you're just gonna rotate your fabric, okay? So that way your fabric doesn't go anywhere. It's, you know, it's secure in there because the needle is down. So you just have to make sure your needle is all the way down or some way of the way down. Um, that way you can turn your fabric, okay? And then you just put your presser foot back down and you keep sewing and hopefully you won't have any more um, difficulties. <laughs> Okay, so we got to another elastic point. I'm gonna just back stitch to secure it. And then I'm gonna go back. There we go. Now remember my um, sides didn't line up. So I'm just checking to see that I don't go um, too much further from the other backing. Okay, so just checking. And then once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my project and continue. You can take that pin out. going to leave that little two inch gap. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I like to back stitch this last one just so it secures it a little bit better. Okay and with your needle at your further furthest up you're going to go ahead and lift your presser foot and cut that out. Now some of you might have a little um, thread cutter on the side of your machine that's there to ideally um have you cut your threads there and it gives you the exact um amount of thread that you want left over so it doesn't go under or it you know pops up um if you don't have that you could just you know estimate like a good three inches i wouldn't leave it any longer than that just because um you know you could get that tangly effect okay so now let's adjust my camera really quick. All right, so we have our project right here. I'm gonna take out all the straight pins. If you didn't do that already, just do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut any little thing that I think might be a little bulky, okay? Um, if you have too much fabric on your side like this that I have, that much left over. Um, I'm just gonna cut that right off and I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch in there um, because then it's gonna get bulky and you really don't want the bulk. Um, it's gonna be harder to sew around later. Okay, so we're good right here. You might wanna cut your corners a little bit, again, just to get rid of some bulk. Just remember to not cut all the way because Obviously, that'll 
not be good. And then you'll probably get some fraying and your project will probably um, start coming apart as you use it. Now in that two inch hole that we made, okay, we're just gonna go ahead and put our fingers through and we're just gonna go ahead and turn our project. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can use your fingers, you can use a pencil, um, just don't use your scissors um, to push out those corners. Okay, all right, and now you have your mask, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and our opening, we're gonna go ahead and press it with our fingers. You can use an iron if you want an iron and you wanna go over this and you know iron it flat, that's completely up to you. I find that finger pressing is just as fine. Um, and you're gonna tuck that little Okay, and you can take your straight pen and close that little gap. Okay, and now um, we're going to make some pleats. Now the pleats um, are going to go right through the middle. Okay, so um, and I find that that gives the um, the mask a little bit more shape when you put it on. That way um, it covers your face a little bit nicer, a little bit snugger. Um, I know some people don't use that, but um, I like to use them and I feel like it, it helps a little bit. Um, okay, so to create your pleats, oh, your pleats, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, um, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna go ahead and starting at the top, you're gonna fold over. And I would say you're gonna fold over about half an inch, not not too much. Okay, fold over and you're gonna take your straight pins and you're gonna pin it in place like that. And whoops, pin it in place just like that. Okay. And then you're gonna do a second pleat right under it. So you're gonna take your finger and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be anything. Let's see, I've got a longer pin. Now for these, I like longer pins so I can pin a little bit further from the edge and still have a good pin, a good hold. Um, and then you're gonna do it on the other side. Okay, now when you're sewing multiple layers like this, it can get a little bit tricky um, with your machine. Um, if you have a dull needle or a needle that you've been using for quite a while, um, it can be a little bit hard um, because it just, it won't go through as easily. So I suggest, and I probably should have said this at the beginning, that you pop in a fresh needle um, I want to say like every four or five projects you make, just pop in a fresh needle. It's very helpful in um, making sure that it doesn't break or it doesn't bend or it damages the machine. Um, that's what happened to my other um, sewing machine. I didn't change the needle and I tried to go through a bunch of layers and it ended up messing up the timing and now I have to get it fixed. So um, with that being said, change your needle every so often um, so you don't have to go through that because um, it's not fun. Thank you, Maria. That's a good tip for everybody. You're welcome. Oh. I think we, we, we always forget that. So thank you I, for that reminder. I know I always do. <laughs> I, just, I just go and I just sew. Um, so it's, it's very easy to forget. Um, okay, so you know I'm gonna cut off this little thread that I see here. Okay, so now you have your pleats and you're gonna have your um, pins the long way. And now you're just gonna finish your project. So you can start at any end that you would like. Um, I like to start 
at the opposite, I guess, not the opposite, but the corner, the bottom corner of where my gap is. Um, that's where I like to start. So uh, we're gonna go here and again, about a quarter inch, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just line up the edge of your fabric to the edge of your presser foot and that should be sufficient. Um, this um, is really only to secure your pleats and to close up that gap. So it's really not um, a huge deal. And we're also gonna back stitch once again over here. I'm gonna do that manually again. There's a lot of different layers here because you can see it's it's a little bulky. Um, so I'd rather do it manually as opposed to with my um, pedal just because, um, I don't know, it's, I feel safer that way um, now that my other needle bent and ruined my other machine. So <laughs> here we go. Okay. All right, and you see there I had to lift, stop and lift my foot. Again, just to make sure that the layers go in evenly and now I can go ahead. I'm gonna back stitch just to secure that pleat really nicely in there. And then we're gonna go forward again. Be careful not to get your fingers caught anywhere. Okay, so I'm at the end of my second pleat. I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch twice. And then I'm gonna fold it again. And I'm gonna start. Once again, needle down. Turn your project. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these little ties right here. And you can go ahead. Take your straight pin out. Okay, turn it again. Just make sure your elastic doesn't get caught in your foot. Okay, so now we're at the beginning of our pleats again. So once again, back stitch, back stitch, and then forward, forward. Sure, it does take a little bit longer to do it manually, but you know, I feel safer that way. Um, but if you guys feel confident that you could do it with the pedal, go ahead. It saves you a couple minutes. And going and turning. And we're at the end of our pleat again. And we're gonna back stitch twice. One, two. And we're okay, so you see right there, I finished right on the elastic. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm gonna lift my scissor foot. Um, my needle went through a little bit too far, so I'm just going to back stitch to kind of give myself, get myself back on the right track. Turn my project. Okay, I'm right here, I'm at the end, right where we started manually go through and then back stitch a couple back stitches um and with my needle up and then I go ahead and take it out. Maria? Yes. Sorry Josephine had a question and I missed it before. I apologize Josephine. She asked how wide is side after pleating? 
That's a great question. The side after pleading, let me measure that out so I don't give you the wrong information, is about three inches. Okay, so it's about three inches, but I'll show you. Um, it covers your face pretty well. So this is your front, this is your back, your elastics, and you're just gonna go ahead and put your Okay, so it does, even though it has the pleats, it opens up very well and you can see it covers your whole face. Now, if the elastic is a little bit too big and you find there's too much gap in between your face and the mask and you want it a little bit more snug, just go ahead and, you know, feel it out. Okay, I have this much that I wanna take back in and you just go ahead and try as best as you can to pin it and then go in the machine and kind of just um, sew along the edge. And that'll pretty much, um, or even you can do it even with like a hand stitch or with a thread and needle and really um, customize it to um, your face. Hmm, that fit in my, in my mouth, sorry. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it for your face mask. Now, if you were going to do, if you don't have elastic and you were going to do like a tie back mask, um, it's the same thing, the same instructions. The only difference is that you're not going to connect the end of your, um, your string or your ribbon, your whatever it is that you're using to the other corner, making it a loop. You're just gonna leave it loose. So when you put it on, you can actually adjust how tight you need to have it, okay? Does that make sense? Yes, and um, Maria, who was attending the program, has a great tip. She said, I tried sewing in a pipe cleaner across the top then you can bend it around the nose tightly. It's a great oh, idea. Oh, there you go. There you go, that's a great idea. I've never thought of that. Um, I wish I had pipe cleaners. <laughs> yeah. This is about the time you wish you had like arts and crafts kits everywhere, right? <laughs> Alrighty, um, any questions on the masks, either tied or elastic, um, anything? As of right now, we don't have any questions. Okay. Alrighty, so um, I guess we'll go back to our next project. Does that sound good? Do you guys need a little bit of time? Do we have enough time? I don't know how long you guys took the, the room for, I was gonna say. <laughs> okay. A couple of people are commenting. Josephine says she's done the pipe cleaner and it works great. Nice. Okay. That's awesome. Which is nice because I've been trying to figure out uh, what to put in my mask. I, had yeah. I find that sometimes the mask slips off my nose. Yes. Um, right? Is that like a common thing? And it's so annoying because you have to keep, you know, pulling it up. But that pipe cleaner tip is pretty awesome. Yeah, I found that my masks were fine when I was just walking outside, but once I started talking to people, it... Yeah, that's when it starts getting loose. I'm going on to uh, Amazon now to order pipe cleaners. <laughs> okay. Um... I also found that Michael's has very fast shipping during this time, if anyone is yes looking to get some supplies um i'm also going to post the materials and the directions for the next project so i'm doing that now as maria gets set up for that okay um so i'm pretty maria, much maria the the maria who's attending maria verasatro <laughs> sorry if i'm butchering that but she said that she saw a cool idea with small rubber bands and buttons to make to attach to your glasses to make? Oh, interesting, yeah. A lot of people have been asking me about um, 
making, um, especially for like nurses or people that have to use these for long periods of time, um, the headbands that have the buttons. So um, instead of the elastic going around your ear, it goes around the button. They're, um, I guess you could call them ear savers. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've made a few of those too. Um, and they're very simple too. Um, and that helps, you know, if, or maybe if your mask isn't fitting the right way and the elastic is, you know, wearing out or whatever, you can always just pin it to the, to the ear saver and do that. Um, I've had some people use like bobby pins. I know my sister uses clips, the like hair clips to pin the the elastic to her hair because her face is a little bit more delicate and you know demure um so um so yeah there's like tons of tips out there pinterest and facebook i'm sure there's a lot of information about how to wear your mask mm -hmm. all righty so um Moving along to our next project. Now, the next project I thought was a neat idea. I saw this um, on a blog that I really like a lot. And um, it's basically, and I, I liked it mostly because um, I have babies in my house. I have 11 month um, twins. Actually, they're almost a year, if you can believe that. Um, but, um, they just make a lot of mess. They make a huge, huge mess. So I had been wasting paper towels like a crazy person. And it dawned on me that I could just use a towel and wash it. So instead of just going crazy and buying like little face towels or, you know, hand towels, um, I was like, you know, what? I have a ton of old towels that I don't even look at anymore. I keep using the same nice ones over and over. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I had leftover like flannel from old shirts and all this stuff. So I was like, you know what, let's, let's do this. And um, it's pretty neat. You just, it, you're gonna recycle any old fabric that you have, um, preferably terry cloth, obviously, because that's the most absorbent. But if you have any fleece um, or any cotton, um, fabric that you have laying around this is pretty good or any jersey like t-shirts things like that this is awesome um so i'm going to show you one side is old towel and the other side is just some um fleece that i have laying around um and we're just going to make some reusable towels and they're great for just cleaning up any mess they're great for just cleaning around the house um i found them very very useful and you can just pop them in the washer and um you know launder them sanitize them um if you wanted to bleach them you could bleach them um and yeah they're pretty reusable and they're environmentally friendly so I like that a lot. So this is very, very simple. You're just going to need um, two pieces of material, again, preferably terry cloth or any piece of old towel. And um, we're going to do 12 by 12, okay? And then the other side will be um, 12 by 12 as well. Um, you can use both sides as towel material. That's completely cool. Um, just keep in mind that the thicker your material, um, more attention has to go into your um, needle in your machine. Different needles come with different weights. So there's universal needles, there's needles that are special for satin, there's uh, denim needles, leather needles, um, all types. So the thicker your, um, I guess, um, layers, um, the more weight your needle will have to be, um, just to make sure that it doesn't bend, damage the machine, break, or anything like that. Um, right now I have a universal needle in, um, I find that that works with most of the projects. Um, however, again, if you're using thicker 
um, layers, go ahead and use a denim one or a leather one. They tend to be heavier weight, so they tend to um, be a little bit stronger and push through those layers very well. Okay. Um, I do have a regular presser foot on. If you wanted to use a walking foot, that's cool too. Um, if you don't know what a walking foot is, it's a special foot, and I wish I had it with me right now, but it's a special foot that's made for quilting, and it basically kind of walks your fabric. So as you're sewing, it kind of just feeds it in a way that's not sliding, but rather um, like walking on it. That's why it's called a walking foot. It kind of just um, makes it easier. So you could do that too. If you're a quilter and you have one of those special foots, you could do that. Um, all right, so we're gonna start um, very simple. So again, you're gonna go ahead and take your pieces. If you have patterns um, on them or if there's a specific side that you want to show on the outside, then um, go ahead and make that your right side. So my piece of towel is just plain. There is no right side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that there. And then um, my piece of fleece, um, or flannel rather, sorry, I keep calling it fleece, it's flannel. Um, it does have a right side and a wrong side, the wrong side being the more faded one. So I'm gonna put the right side down onto uh, my cherry cloth. I'm gonna line it up as nicely as possible. Again, I cut this a little bit off. Um, what I did here is that I actually cut off the edge of the towel that is always a little bit tougher, um, like the border of it, just so it doesn't have to um, put more strain on my machine than it really has to. So I'm gonna go ahead and line it up as nice as possible. We're gonna, again, straight pin this puppy on the four sides. No real specific way of straight pinning. If you like to straight pin going up and down, that's fine. If you like to straight pin sideways, that's fine too. I like to straight pin the corners. Okay. And once again, you're going to go ahead and sew around your project. And you're gonna sew um, about a quarter inch allowance. Um, and you're gonna leave about a three inch um, gap anywhere on your project so we can turn it back around. Um, I do three inches, like three finger widths. That's how I measure three inches. That's probably closer to two, but I usually just use my fingers to do that. If you wanna be more precise and take a ruler and do that, go right ahead. All right, so uh, I'm gonna start. And again, I have both of my threads, both of my tails, nice and easy right there. I'm gonna go ahead and match it up as best as I can. Find my pedal, I just lost it. Every time I move my machine, I lose my pedal. Um, okay, and we're gonna start. It might look a little crooked, but again, it's on the inside, so that's not gonna. Okay, there's no need to backstitch for this one because you're not really securing anything. Um, but you're gonna stop with your needle down and turn your fabric. Okay, now I just checked my um, stitching and it was all great. 
and over here it kind of went a little sideways and there's a little gap you can always go back and um redo that little piece so i'll show you in a little bit okay <laughs> Right here, it's bulking up, so I'm just going to take my straight pin out and I'm going to straighten this up as much as possible to get rid of that bulk. Okay, turn it. Okay, sometimes you will see that your fabric shifted and it's going to be a little bulky at the end. That's okay, just stitch right over that, like that. It's really not going to make a huge difference. Okay, needle in the up position. I'm going to cut this right up. Make sure I cut my tail ends. Okay. All right, so now I'm checking to see if there's any gaps. So like I said before, I noticed that I did not catch both the, um... <laughs> okay, so I just did <laughs> something really silly. And I guess this is really, <laughs> this just goes to show you it happens to the best of us. So remember that I told you to leave a, um, a two inch gap? <laughs> I didn't leave a two inch gap. So I guess it was really lucky for me that I missed that spot <laughs> because I can now go with my seam ripper or with my scissors and um, kind of rip some of those stitches out because I totally sealed myself off. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but ideally you would um, leave yourself that um, two to three inch gap and um, you know, check that everything did um, sew together. And if you're silly like me and you, you know, made a mistake, it's okay, just take your seam ripper and rip it out. All right, so I do have a lot of fabric left over, so I'm gonna cut that as close to the edge as possible without being too close. To line it up with the other one. And um, just again, if you guys, if I didn't mention this before, you want to use fabric scissors. Um, they're sharp enough to like cut through all the layers um, and they'll leave clean marks as opposed to regular scissors. Um, don't ever use your fabric scissors on regular paper or regular materials because it will ruin the scissors. Um, so I'm just going to take all of the excess out, all of the excess fabric. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and cut our corners, cut them. Um, that looks a little bulky over here, so I'm going to take that out. Okay. Uh, cut more of my corners. And the only reason you cut your corners is just to get rid of the bulk. Um, it'll make it easier when you turn your project. Okay. So let's I'm gonna go ahead and get that cleaned up. Um, now you're ready to turn. So stick your fingers in there, your hand if it fits, and you're gonna start pulling it out. If you notice that some of the stitches are coming apart or there's some fraying, it's okay. You can always just tuck it in at the end and um, make sure it stitches up. And if it's too much, you can always go back on the opposite side, turn it inside out and fix it 
um, that way. Okay, now at this point, if you wanted to take an iron and press it all around and make it nice and neat, you can do that. Um, I find that finger pressing is always good. All right, so now you're gonna take your open end and we're gonna do just like our mask. You're gonna tuck in the fabric and then you're gonna pin it together to secure it in place. Okay. Okay, and this is where it gets a little tricky because of the bulking. Um, you're still going to have a little bit of bulk because obviously you had a little bit of um, fabric left over in the seam. Um, and that's okay. When you're um, sewing, though, you can make sure that you sew just outside of um, that little bulk. And it's going to create um, almost like a little border. Yeah. Um, so, but it's up to you. It's however you want to do it. If you want to do it exactly um, on top of the bulk, that's fine. If you want to do it a little outside, that's cool too. And I'm just going to start over here and close up my um, project. Um, now I'm going to start on, this is where my hole is. I'm going to start on the opposite corner. Um, again, that's just my preference. I think that sometimes when you start right on top of it, um, there is a chance for your needle, your pin needle, to get um, stuck under there. Um, so I think if you start on the opposite and work your way around to where your um, closing is, um, it leaves you a little bit more of security so um, your pin needle doesn't get stuck in there. Okay, so I'm going to start that way. And you'll see... Um, it's a little bulky there, but I'm gonna start right on the edge of where that bulk ends. And I'm gonna manually stitch a couple of stitches, one, two, and then I'm gonna go ahead. And if you've ever taken a class with me, um, I got a lot of questions about, oh, how do you do it so your, you know, your stitch is really straight? Honestly, it just takes a lot of practice. It doesn't, nobody really takes a look at how straight your stitch is. So just practice. And if anything, if it's not straight, you can just say it's handmade and that's what the charm is, you know? The charm in handmade things is that it's not perfect. So, okay, so here I can take my pin out. I can say that I've secured everything. Okay, and I'm at the end, so I'm going to go ahead and back stitch it and call it a die. Two common scissors. And cut off all the little ends. And there you have it. This is your towel. Now, um, there are options, and if you um, look at 
um, Pinterest or other ideas, there are options to put snaps or Velcro in um, these towels to make them roll up like in a paper towel. So they would kind of just enclose, right? Um, but I find that sometimes just having them handy, um, you know, on a special part of the counter or in a drawer, um, it's neat and, you know, they just lay flat. So, but it's up to you if you wanted to add snaps or Velcro, if you wanted to roll them up in a roll, um, you know, it's completely up to you. But um, that's it. That's your uh, on towel, on paper towel towel. Um, and um, any questions on this one? If anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and type them in. Um, if you want to show us your project or if you have yeah, any questions for Maria and you want her to see your project, we can um, we can turn on your camera. So let us know if you have a specific question or if you want to share. You're more than welcome to do that. Just let us know in the chat. Is anyone sewing along with us? Did anyone have any success in making these as we were here for the past hour and 15 minutes together? <laughs> <laughs> Patty said that she hasn't used her sewing machine in over 20 years. Oh, wow. Um, and so. Maria. Maria would like you to show threading the machine once again. Okay. And after we do that, it looks like Josephine has a mask she wants to show us. So that's awesome. Nice. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to turn my machine on. Uh, I'm going to take all of this out. Okay. Um, I'm going to take my bobbin out too. All right. Okay, so let's see if we could get a nice close up of our machine here. Okay, so this is our handy dandy machine. Um, all right, to thread this guy, um, most machines, like I mentioned, have little diagrams along where you thread the machine to tell you the steps. It'll say one, two, um, and it'll show you. And you know what? Yeah. Um, this one in particular doesn't really have one, um, but most machines are threaded the same way. Now, and if you, it, if yours doesn't, consult your manual. It's always there to reference. Um, I'm sure the library might even have um, manuals from machines um, online. Um, okay, so let's start. Okay, so here's the top of our machine. You're gonna see that it has um, a little stick right here and it goes up and down. Um, down when you're using like a shorter type of um, thread, maybe a bobbin if you're using that, but we're popping it up because it's a big spool. Um, this guy is for your bobbin. So to the right, it means that it's gonna thread your bobbin. Staying to the left, it means that it's gonna just sew. Okay, so now you see the little diagrams right here. Right, so mine uh, on my machine, the dashed line is for the bobbin, and the solid line is for the um, regular threading of the machine, the top thread. Okay, and that's what I'm going to show you. All right, so the thread is gonna, you know, the spool goes on the little stick, um, and then you're going to thread along following the arrow. So, and excuse me, because I have one hand right here. So you see, it's gonna go through that little tiny eyelet, that little, 
Okay, and then you're gonna follow it down. Okay, you're gonna follow it down. And you're gonna go under the, the um, button. I almost forgot the name of that. <laughs> under the button, the lever. Um, okay, you're gonna go under. And you see this right here? I'm not sure if I'm showing that right, but you can see there's like um, a silver looking, um, wait, let me see, can you guys see that? Right here, it's like a little silver um, piece that's popping up and if you move your handle, it goes up and down. Okay, so you're gonna go under that knob Okay, and you're gonna go and loop it through that little silver piece. Now, it seems more difficult than it is, but you're gonna literally see how it goes over and under. Okay, so I'll show you that again. Okay, so it goes down here. It goes over and under. Okay, now you're gonna have it here. And now you're gonna follow it down. And then making sure your needle's in the most upright position. There's a little tiny wedge here, a little eyelet, and you're just gonna pop your thread through there. Now, can I zoom with this? No, I can't zoom with this. But it's right there, I promise you it is. It's right here, I don't know if you could see it. Right there, so you're gonna pop it through there. Okay, and then you're just gonna go ahead and thread your needle from front to back. I might need both hands for this, but you get the idea. All right, and then the bobbin is a little bit more to it. So your bobbin, I'm gonna put this back in. Uh, Maria, she said she didn't need to see the bobbin again. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Oh, and perfect. somebody else needs. Oh, wait, Amelia does want to see the bobbin. So okay. Maria right. doesn't need it, but Amelia does. So we'll show it. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm going to start with the bobbin in. So your bobbin looks like that. It looks like a weird contraption that comes from outer space. It looks like it belongs on a spaceship. But no, that's just a sewing machine. Okay, so the way you take this out is you're gonna lift up this little lever right here. Oops, this guy right here. And that somehow has a mechanism that allows you to like lock it in and out. I don't know how that works or how that was built, but it's pretty genius. Um, this is the front of your bobbin, this is the back of your bobbin, okay? Now your thread is already ready and you're going to want to make sure that the tail of your thread is on the left side. So when you're holding it facing you, it's on the left side, kind of like a backwards P, right? Can you guys see that? Is my hand in the way? I think we can see it great, Maria. You're doing a fantastic job with your camera work here. <laughs> with my camera work, that's awesome. Okay, so now this is, this is always gonna be up. So make sure that that little stick is up when you turn it, okay? So you're just gonna pop your bobbin in there your thread. Now you're gonna make sure that you squeeze it between your fingers, otherwise it's gonna like slip away. But make sure your thread is still on the left side. Now you see that little tiny little wedge there? There's tiny, tiny little wedge. You're gonna go ahead and take your thread and put it through that little wedge. And then this little plate here, I don't know how they discovered that, but they did something with it. And you're just basically gonna slide your thread right under that, and it's gonna end up in that big space. See that? Do you want me to do it again? You can do it again. So we're gonna take it out. Okay, it's on the left side. 
your button, put it right in, take your thread. And I pulled it too hard and it broke. So now <laughs> you guys got the idea. It goes through that little. So now you know, don't pull it too hard because it'll break. There you go. Okay, and that is in essence your bobbin threaded. I'm gonna take it with the two fingers. Okay, lift the little lever again. And just line it up into that little groove. Make sure it's in there. Okay, and that's, that's it. And then when you want to um, go ahead and pick up your thread, let's go ahead and thread this guy. If I can thread it real quick. Mm -hmm. I can't thread it, hold on. Just really quick, I promise. Okay, front to back. You're gonna hold that steady. Move your needle manually up and down. And you see how that threaded up? Boop. That's it. And that is how you thread your machine. You can just put that away and put your cover on. All right. How was that? That was great. Okay, good. Always okay. good to get a refresher. Always done. All right, any other questions? Um, everybody's really excited, but it looks like, um, I think it was Josephine has a mask to show. Okay, so oh, nice. yeah, Josephine, I'm going to promote you to a panelist <laughs> so you can show us everything. I'm very excited to see her mask. I know, me too. I love seeing finished projects. Can you see it? Not yet. Wait, hold on. Give us a sec. I have to unspotlight. Okay, I you just got a lot of windows to shut. Oh, hello. Okay. Hi, Josephine. I'm spotlighting you. Hi. Oh, I love it. Very nice. This is very interesting. We discussed the the pipe cleaner and we totally forgot about doing that. So I ran into my sewing room and got a piece of ribbon and sewed the pipe cleaner in. Okay. <laughs> That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Okay. Anyway, it, I did it as we were talking. So I, I did the whole um, mask through the lesson. So thank you. And you're so patient with everybody. <laughs> I love that. I love your fabric, too. That fabric's really nice. Yeah. And from what I read online, they claim that you're supposed to wash the fabric before you use yes, it. Yes, before you use it. I think because of the chemicals in it and it's against your face. So I- Actually, it's one. not because of shrinkage. Um, what happens with fabric when you buy it brand new, um, it hasn't been washed. So if you wash your fabric, once you, once you get it, um, it leaves some, um, it leaves the fabric kind of to the size it should be. So if it does happen to shrink a little bit, it won't shrink Great. your project. So that's um, also an interesting point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. I just thought I'd show you. Thanks. It looks great. I love it. We appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. It was awesome. Does was anybody awesome. else have anything to share? I love seeing projects. Hold on, let me check the chat. No, nobody else wants to share anything with us? Man. Well, if you're still working on your project. I'm still working on mine. Um, 
you can always share with us on social media after. You can use the hashtag MCPL at home um, if you want to share, if you're still working on it. Nice. And this will be on YouTube, so you can watch it there if you forgot a part. Um, you can go back in and watch it. Yes, and I'll also post the directions on our Facebook and our Instagram. And I will put my email in here. If anyone would like the directions, I could just email me and I will send them to you. Maria does a fantastic job of laying them out. Thank so, you. Um, it's a really nice copy of the directions she put together. So I'm happy to mail those out to whoever needs them. Just email me and you could, you know, keep them in your email if you ever have to refer to them or print them out. So we would be happy to give you those if you need them. Everyone is saying that you're wonderful and it was Thank great. Yeah, I always appreciate that. Flattery will get you everywhere, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoyed it and enjoy the day out. It's going to be beautiful. Well, it is beautiful out. So hopefully you guys can enjoy the day, maybe do a little barbecuing, a little grilling action. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for your patience and working through my uh, technical difficulties.